is dead. So this is something I noticed during the pandemic era. I still, I'm still seeing it, but with like different topics. We won't get into those different topics, but Revolutionary Blackout Network said here, all the people who call themselves socialists who advocated for mandates for this vaccine while doing propaganda for Big Pharma should never be taken seriously ever again. Big Pharma socialists, what a crazy era that was. <clears throat> and it was a uh, a study, basically, uh, that refers to basically miscategorization for the medical treatment. And this is something I noticed that I kind of referred to beforehand, that there's a lot of people that were comrades or like on the far left that were completely shilling for this shit. They were shilling for lockdowns. They were shilling for mandates. They were completely in lockstep with liberals when it came to all the like safe and effective blah, 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 propaganda. Um, and that was really interesting to me because like you had a whole group of people online who would correctly call out the capitalist apparatus. They would correctly call out problems with the capitalist system. But when it come to, came to big pharma, they had blinders on, they had no analysis. Yeah. It's like they completely yeah. forgot about capitalism. Mm -hmm. No, no, these are the good ones. Yeah. These are, these are the good corporations guys. There's good mm -hmm. corporations, and bad corporations. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of the point I made here. I'm convinced that there's a branch of big pharma agents that LARP as comrades on social media. The 100% lockstep establishment adherence from so-called far left accounts, quote unquote, uh, regarding COVID was unbelievably fucking weird. Zero analysis whatsoever when it comes to big pharma. And the interesting thing is like, there's a bunch of examples in this thread that like completely proved my point. Yeah. Big pharma is terrible. But that doesn't mean insulin or an inhaler or a COVID vaccine won't save your life. So tactics like this, where it's like we lump in two things that obviously will save your life. And then yeah. they just, they attach the propaganda piece at the end. Mm -hmm. But like just looking at this thread, there's tons of these people. Like, are we anti-vax now? Is that why you have RFK on your show? Again, all Nick's criticizing is the mandates. He's yeah. not saying anything about the vax. And again, we here at INN are not making any definitive statements about the vaccine either. All I'm criticizing is the information surrounding it. So mm -hmm. you see these people, all he's, all he's talking about is the mandates. Like the policies behind this, where it's like, you have to take this, otherwise a bunch of your rights are going away, right? So a bunch of people like this one, and you, you can tell this is a keeper because they got the Ukraine flag and the, they, I mean, they got every flag. They got the Israel flag. <laughs> like They got all the flags. Every flag. We're just the world. We yeah. are the world. We are the children. Yeah. And then, so like one of them, tweets uh, a vaccine advocate what, like I'm sorry like if you identify as a vaccine advocate on Twitter you need to go and fucking touch grass you need to like play some World of Warcraft or some shit because you'll be less nerdy that way holy <laughs> shit holy fucking shit uh, she's not even she's not even like she doesn't even have any education in this field she's just randomly a vaccine advocate so here's the thing, <clears throat> someone tagged this person and they're like, there's no study linked in the tweet. I mean, first off, you can find this study Googling in five seconds. You can just Google the title and then go to the article and you can find the study. It takes five fucking seconds, which I'm demonstrating right here. <laughs> He's like, there's no big conspiracy to hide data on vaccine safety. ONS consistently pointed out that the raw numbers show more deaths in vaccinated because more people are vaccinated. And I'm like, but except the study is here and it's per 100K. So what that means is they're factoring in that there's more people in one group of people than the other. They're factoring that in and they're still okay. at this conclusion. So 
you see a lot of these fucking people, not just this, but a lot of big pharma socialists. Can you please look at the bigger picture that the medical establishment is pro-infection, making people sick, which makes them have to seek out medical care? You know, for pro- the pro- for profit healthcare system is involved. Why not question how deep COVID causes vascular damage? First off, I don't know why they just attach that to the end of the tweet. It makes no fucking sense. <laughs> um, but as you can see, it was just a slew of these. It's funny because like he he's literally they're literally showing up and proving his point that like big pharma socialists are an actual thing. I think the reason we saw so many like apparent comrades who are 100% like regurgitating the same talking points that like the establishment and liberals were regurgitating is because they're bought and paid for. Mm-hmm. And I've had an assumption for a while now that um, a lot of these popular far left accounts are probably owned by either like a department agency of some kind, or my biggest hypothesis is that there are people working at the behest of big pharma. Because they'll criticize capitalism, they'll they'll talk about revolutionary action, blah, blah, blah. Um, I saw one, uh, shout out to Misty, another INN member, but um, she shared something really funny a while ago where there's this one like popular like Marxist account who was basically saying wear a mask is going to defeat capitalism. Like it's, they're literally just attaching like the pharma agendas onto like things that they know that especially younger generations are really identifying with like working class solidarity and critique of capitalism and, you know, seizing the means of production and shit like that. They're trying to attach like big pharma initiatives on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of my point. And so if you guys see that, if you guys see that out in the wild on the bird app or on, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and it, it's kind of weird because like these people are saying all the right things, but they seem to like be completely blind and have no analysis when it comes to big pharma. It's probably because big pharma literally pays people to influence the public online. They pay prominent people. They pay people who are popular on the internet to promote their agendas. And that's a real thing that happens and they pay a lot of money to do it. You know why? Cause they make a lot of money back. Um, shit. Just look at, um, just look at how much money they made during the pandemic. They made record profits, like billions upon billions, just money raining down. And a lot of that, I feel at least, was due to the amount of like public pressure that everybody got. The amount of the amount of like lockstep, like, okay, we're all on the same page here. We all want you to do X, Y, and Z. And everybody else felt like there was such a consensus that, you know. The problems with human beings were social animals. There's a lot of pluses that come with that, mm-hmm. such as effective empathy and, you know, working together to achieve a common goal. That's still one of the most like enjoyable aspects about being a social animal. But on the downside, um, you're, you're vulnerable to herd mentality. You're vulnerable to, <clears throat> you know, that feeling of like the rest of your tribe is doing something. So you kind of have to dive in and do that thing mm-hmm. that your tribe is doing. That's a weakness, and that's a weakness we need to be aware of. We need to be cognizant of that weakness.